Welcome back everybody to another episode of Take Back Control Tuesday. Now I can't tell you what the outcome is gonna be for each and every one of you, but what I can tell you is for the next hour and 40 minutes, the time we're gonna to spend together, if you apply what you learn, this will change your financial future. If you're here, that means you're ready for change. And tonight, that's exactly what we're gonna deliver. I've got a special guest for you. His name's Jason Sippel. He is a master of what you're gonna learn. But what are you going to learn? Well, Jason's gonna teach you three things. He's gonna teach you how to take back control of your money by being your own bank. And then he's also gonna teach you how to build wealth through your own debts and expenses. That'll be the second thing you learn. And the third thing you'll learn, hence the cars, you're gonna learn how to get all the money back for every single car that you ever buy, drive, and own. And before you get into it, one last favor, just click that button right there, the subscribe button. It would do me a huge favor. And also, right above is a little bell. Smash that bell so that every time I put new content out, you'll be notified. So I don't want to waste any more time. It's time for Jason to really show you all about the infinite banking concepts. Let's roll. Take back the soul. Tuesday. Tuesday night. Tuesday? What if by changing just one thing, everything would be better financially for your family? Would you change that one thing to be financially free? The one paradigm shift and the new skill is the gap between you and the wealthiest families. Who here, and put it in the chat, who here wants more money? Who here wants more control of your money? And who here wants freedom. I'm going to let you in on a little known fact used by the wealthiest families and visionaries like Walt Disney and the Rockefellers have been using a strategy called the infinite banking concept to build their wealth and preserve their empires. And the strategy is simple, it's legal, and it's something that each and every one of you have access to. And it all starts with just changing the one thing. Start by paying yourself first. Shockingly, we're giving away a large chunk of our money every time we get paid to the evil empire. You're saying, Jason, who's the evil empire? I'm going to propose that it's the banks, Wall Street, and our favorite uncle, Uncle Sam and the government. And do you guys want to know how to recapture and recycle all the money that's leaving your family and bring it back to your family? And it all starts with changing just the one thing. Where does your surplus money go first? So during this presentation, we're going to dive into the infinite banking process. I'm going to show you how you can recapture and recycle all the money that's leaving your family, how you can actually earn money on every car that you buy, drive, and own. And we're going to show you what the average American is doing, which of course is none of you because you're here. And we're going to show you how the banks are making a killing by doing the most profitable business in the world, which is the business of banking. And I thought this was unbelievable. Too good to be true. Like many of you believed previously, but you're here today. So let's dive in, let's go through these concepts together. And my only request is that you keep an open mind, that you keep an open mind, a beginner's mind. And whatever you don't know, write this down. Whatever you don't know, just say, I don't know it yet, okay? So I want you all to picture and envision this, a room full of new grad 17 and 18 year olds, high school graduates with the whole world, the whole open to them, the, their whole life in front of them. They're so excited. They're so excited about their future, about what they're going to go out and create in the world. And I ask them, right? They're sitting next to all of you right now. I ask them, hey, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, how many of you are going to be financially successful by retirement? And they're all going to be, ooh, 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 me, 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 calling me, Jason. 
I'm going to be the next millionaire, the next billionaire, the next Steve Jobs, the next Mark Zuckerberg, the next Elon. But then something happens. Something insidious happens between the time they're 17 and the time that we have retirement age, which, by the way, I believe retirement's made up. But for my story, in that 50-year span, something happens. Something happens. And these really excited and bright young men and women, they do what so many people do. They conform and they do it without realizing it. And when they conform, guess what happens? This shocking statistic, right, from the Social Security Administration becomes true. Only five out of those 100 students with their whole future in front of them become financially free. Only one out of that 100 becomes wealthy. How's this possible? Write it in the chat. How's this possible? How is it possible that in the greatest country in the world, the wealthiest country in the world, the country that gives people from other countries the most possibility to create their dream life? How is it possible that only on average, five out of 100 people are financially free? That's ridiculous. That's something that together we have to change. And we're going to do exactly that in this presentation. I'm going to show you how the wealthiest families avoid the statistic and actually are in the 5%. I'm going to teach each of you how to be that 5%. And let's make it. We got 53 people here. Let's make it so the majority of you can be fin financially free. And before we get there, this is the quote that always stands out to me. The problem in America isn't what people don't know. It's what people think they know that just ain't so. A lot of us have been taught truths about money or taught things about money that actually might not be the truth. And actually, they're not the truth. So I'm going to need you again to keep an open mind in this webinar because I'm going to challenge the way that you're currently thinking. And that'll make room for some new thinking to take root. And who am I? Why, why am I here? You know, my name's Jason Sippel. I'm in Orlando, Florida. Why am I here today to teach you guys? to educate you, to inspire you to take action, and to invite you into something that the wealthiest families have known. You know, I've made every, and I mean every financial mistake that you can make, and hopefully I won't make too many more drastic ones moving forward, but without a financial philosophy, I found myself doing what my parents taught me. And how many of you can relate? Give me a yes if you can relate to this. I saw my parents working hard, providing for the family, you know, adding value. And so I learned to show up first, to work hard, to be humble, to be actually pleasant, to be polite, to leave last, and to trade my most precious resource, my time for money. And I thought that was a path to freedom. I thought, you know, getting a side hustle on the weekends, if I wanted to do more things with my family, was the way to make more money or get a raise. And then I realized at 46 years old, after building a $25 million recruitment division in three and a half years for an equity-backed company and seeing how much wealth was being built in that company, we scaled from 30 to 600 million. Halfway through my MBA, and I realized I was doing it for ego. I was doing it to be to belong to the corporate level, to get equity in this company. I didn't have equity and I was putting my heart and soul into it. And that's when I realized that, hey, I love the people on my team. I love what I'm doing, but I can't be here anymore. I told my wife and she thought I lost my mind. She thought, she's like, what are you, what are you talking about? You can't leave a $180,000 job because you learned something new. And I was like, yes, of course I can. YOLO, like my oldest son says, you only live once. And so I left. I went into high peak performance coaching. I helped someone, someone else scale their dream. I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. But I found myself a year later helping someone else build a $4 million company during COVID. And when I looked around the room while we're doing this exercise, what are your dreams? What are your visions? How much money do you want to make? 
Who do you want to be? Who's surrounded? Where have you gone? What do you own? What car, kind of car do you drive? All the things you need to have a magnet to the future. I broke down and I started crying, like openly weeping among my peers. And I thought, what's happening? Like, why do I keep giving up my agency to help others build wealth when I don't understand money? And I had all these rules around money. And I asked my, my mentor for help. And I called him. I said, Brian, I need help. And he gave me this book off his coffee table. And I read it. And I thought what you all think or might be thinking, this is too good to be true. If this was true, every single American would do this. And I read it again the next day. And then I called him up. I cussed him out. And I was like, why didn't you tell me about this? And he said the most profound thing. Do you guys know what he said? He said, Sip, you weren't ready. And he was right. I wasn't ready yet. But then I started learning and I started realizing this is what everyone needs to know. And that's why I'm here today. So let's jump into this, give you guys what you want. So this isn't a new concept. This has been talked about by some of the people who have just practically changed my life. Some of the people I look up to and I consider mentors. One guy you guys might know, he wrote about a rich dad and a poor dad. And in his book, Second Chance, Robert Kiyosaki talks about this, about specially engineered whole life insurance. And then the big guy who inspired me to leave corporate America, right, wrote about it in Money Master the Game in section 5.2. And then the book I showed all of you, R. Nelson Nash, this book, my belief is this book belongs next to every Bible and every home in America. The most important book I've ever read, period. If you haven't read it, go get a copy. You can listen to it on Audible as well. And then I have my partners and my peers who have written Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, which is their personal journeys, Brent and Chris's personal journey from going and owing tons of money to other people to mapping out systematically the millionaire mystery, which is what I'm going to show you here today. And then Chris also wrote The Private Money Guy, which is his first book, which really talks about how the banks and how you can do what the banks are doing by being the money person in different deals. So let's jump into the training. Now, have you guys seen this, the, this intriguing concept called the backwards bicycle? I love this. If you haven't seen it, go look it up on YouTube. Give me a yes if you guys have seen this before. And I want to ask you, I love this. I go back and watch this time to time because it just reminds us how we learn and how we can maybe get stuck in some patterns. But who learns quickly? Anybody? Who learns quickly? Who learns quicker than us adults? Kids. That's right. Our kids learn quickly. Now think about either when you were teaching your, your child to ride or when you were learning how to ride a bicycle. We all know a bike works one way, right? You get on the bike and you press down the pedals, and what happens? The bike goes forward. You turn the handlebars left, it goes left. You turn the handlebars right, it goes right. Imagine if the bike didn't work that way. Again, go watch this, that backwards bicycle on YouTube. This welder started messing with his engineer, and he, he built the bike, so when he turned left, the bike went right. And when he turned right, the bike went left. And the guy couldn't ride the bike for eight months. Eight months it took him to train himself to rewire his brain. What if, what if you were groomed the same way about money by the banks, by the government, by Wall Street, by your broke ass brother-in-law? What if you were groomed in the same way to take on all the risk, to give up control of your money? And it was as simple as relearning a new skill set that you just don't know yet. So this might be a lot to take in as we go through this, but I'm going to dive into some of the truths about money next. And I want you to keep in mind like this backwards bicycle. I think I could ride this. I would crash. You guys would hopefully wait till I got up before you laugh. But, you know, I would expect that you would laugh a little bit, have some fun. So if we live in the greatest country, which I believe we do, I live in the greatest state. Sorry for all of you people in California and elsewhere, you know, from the webinar, but Florida is the, the greatest state there is in my mind, just because we had the most freedom during one of the toughest times in our human history. 
And why aren't more people successful in this great country with money? Right? We're able to go and work as much as we want, to build the businesses we want, to be entrepreneurs, to be employees, to lead teams, to do all the things. Well, why aren't people more successful? Well, there's two parts of money. There's the math part, right? The spreadsheet part, the part that doesn't lie. And then you have the more important part in my estimation, which is the most important real estate in the world is the mind, right? The mindset between your ears. And so let's look at a couple wealth killers. For wealth killers, we have taxes, right? Who here thinks they don't pay enough in taxes? Anybody? Anybody want to pay more in taxes? No, I, I, I don't see any yeses. Okay. How about, does anyone think that inflation is not a real thing? Or the boom and bust of the, the market? Yes, we've seen right a, a crazy spike in the market and crypto and different things. But we also know that with that spike comes the downside with it, right? The volatility. And then the interest. Does anybody think that they're not paying enough interest in their life? You know, out to other people. Anybody? Brad's saying yes. Brad's saying, so Brad, you're not, you want to pay more taxes, Brad? That's fun. And then we have the mindset. We have following what everyone else is doing and expecting it to work. When we saw statistically, it doesn't. We have the fears. I, I claim that there's only two fears, the fear of failure and the fear of regret. That's it, right? Fear of failure, sorry. Fear of, fear of failure and fear of rejection. My bad. So let's look at some of the mysteries of money. What's the definition of money? Could I get something that we all agree on in the chat? What is the mystery of money, right? Or the definition of money? The definition of money is a means of exchange. Nothing more. I'm going to give you money for a car, car for money, money for food, food for money, money for a home, home for money. So nothing more than a simple means of exchange. And money to make more money has to stay in motion. It's one of God's laws, right? It has to keep moving. Do you guys know of any business that uses or company that uses compound interest? Some of you might be saying, oh, Jason, I know, call on me. It's the banks. The banks use compound interest. No, the banks pay you interest and they use your money, but they don't actually give you compound interest. When you walk in, think about this. If you hand them a, the teller a $100 bill, and they wrote your name on the $100 bill, Jason, and they went and deposit in the box. When you come back, is that $100 bill still there? Can they go back to that box and give it back to you? No. As soon as your money goes into the bank, it becomes, is it an asset or a liability, right? For those of you who think it's an asset, I used to think the same thing, but it's factually and actually a liability to the bank. So the bank has to do what? They have to move that money, keep it in motion because money in motion makes more money, which is going to be a big point in today's conversation. Are your dollars worth more today or in the future? And again, everything I'm telling you is stupid simple. There's no trick questions. For this one, just think, if I had a dollar today, how many candy bars could I buy? If I had a dollar 20 years ago, how many candy bars could I buy? We know you could buy a lot more candy bars 20 years ago than that same dollar will buy you today. So your dollars are worth more today. Taxes, are they going up or down in the future? Up or down? Anyone? They're going up. That's right, Michael. They're going up. All you have to do, and this might freak you out a little bit, but go to usdebtclock.org, look it up, look at how much debt we have as a country right now. Does Uncle Sam make money? Yes or no? Does Uncle Sam make money, actually produce money? And the answer, the answer is actually no. Uncle Sam does not make money. Uncle Sam and our relationship is not symbiotic. It's parasitic. Uncle Sam taxes us when they need more money. And you know they can't raise the taxes too much, so what do they do? They cast a wider net. My belief by just looking at the trend is we're in a historically low tax season right now. But we're going to see that go up in the future because of our spending habits as a country. And what do you guys know about your retirement account? How many of you here have qualified plans? 401ks, IRAs, you know, for the 421Bs or, or whatever they are. It's escaping me at the moment. But how many of you have money that's being locked up for the future? You're taking care of your future self. All right, Brian, Michael, Francisco, awesome. So 
how much do you guys know about your retirement accounts? I'm going to say most of you, not a lot. You know how much the company is matching and not a lot more. When I always look at that, I always say, well, wait, if it's a government created problem, right? Not having enough money to retire. And now we're going to defer for money, which means postpone taxes to the future when we just told you they're going to be higher. And there's no guarantees in the account. The only thing we're guaranteed is it's not going to be less than zero. And the money's going to be locked up for Uncle Sam to use, who we know they're, they're not exactly the most frugal when it comes to money and spending. Maybe we want to take care of our money and use strong dollars today to put away in a tax-free place where they're growing away from the government versus having Uncle Sam as a partner. He's probably, would you guys agree, Uncle Sam might not be the best business partner to have? I've got a whole story for it, but just in the essence of time today, I'm going to skip over that. So again, I understand this might be a lot to observe, absorb. But I've said a lot. I've talked a lot of serious things about your money and how your money is actually working. And it definitely interrupts their traditional way of thinking about money. But to build true generational wealth, you'll need to make space to challenge these old concepts and understand how money truly works. So let's go through and talk about this super simple money multiplier method and how together we're going to map out the millionaire mystery. There's three parts. Part number one is the machine. I've already talked a little bit about the machine, so it shouldn't be that much of a mystery when we get there. Part number two is the marathon. And if you saw, oh, I jumped in. We got the marathon, right? I don't like to run marathons unless I've swam 2.4 miles and ridden 112 miles first. That's just me. But just know that the first principle in infinite banking is long range thinking or long term thinking, right? As R. Nelson Nash said, we want to plan as if we're going to live forever and live as if we're going to die today. What a beautiful, beautiful idea. You guys agree? It's a beautiful idea. And then we're going to talk about the millionaire mystery and not just being a millionaire, but a multimillionaire if that's your desire. You guys decide. It's your life. You guys get to pick. Let's talk about this machine and talk about what the machine is not. So the machine is nothing more than a dividend paying whole life insurance policy from a mutually owned company. Again, it's a, you guys might have heard it this way. It's especially engineered for you policy from a mutually owned dividend paying whole life company. And why a mutual company, Jason? Well, because a mutual company, you're the owner, you're number one, you're the most important person. In a stock company, the dividends, the returns, the profit goes to the stock owners first before it would come to you as an owner of a contract. And what is it not? What is the machine not? The machine is not. We are not talking about Anything with a UL, IULs, VULs, ULs are term. These things have a place, but not in our banking conversation. Okay, so we're not talking about index universal life. And by the way, the majority of these things, IUL, VUL, ULs, have only been around for less than 40 years. Think about that. The machine's been around for 200 plus years, 200 plus years, longer than the IRS, longer than the central banking system and the Federal Reserve. And so we're going to go through, if you guys, here's a fun, interactive lesson I love to do. So grab a pen, grab a paper, pencil, marker, crayons, whatever you have. Let's do a fun, interactive exercise. You guys ready? On the top left, right bank, the top right, right policy. Think of this as like a Coke versus Pepsi taste test, okay? Under both, we're going to write the word liquidity. You know what I mean by liquidity? Can I get a definition in the chat? What do we have? Liquidity is, liquidity is, you guys are right. Liquidity just means you have access to the money. It's not locked up in money prison. Anybody here have a high yield savings account? If you do, throw it in the chat. What is it paying you currently? I've had conversations, about 3,000 of them, where people are making three and a half, four, four and a quarter, even four and a half percent, even though they've come down a little bit recently, right? Under bank, we're going to put 0.07%. Unless you have a high yield, like Chris Thompson here, put 4.2%. Let's use that number. Chris's number, 4.2. Under policy, we're going to write 3.25%. That's the first 
of two guarantees we're going to talk about. That is contractually guaranteed for your whole, right? It's a word, your whole life. It'll never do any worse than that, ever. Under bank, you have taxable. So Chris's 4.2% is going to be taxable. The growth in that is taxable as in income, right? In the policy, you have tax-free. You have tax-free growth. You have tax-free loans. You have tax-free distribution. The proper term is tax advantaged, but because the growth, the loans, and the drawing down, it can be tax-free, we're going to call it tax-free in this presentation. Underbank, unstable. Jason, what do you mean by unstable? Well, think about the beginning of 2023. You guys remember where Governor Newsom in California's money was, what bank, and what happened? The Silicon Valley Bank, right? And the Silicon Valley Bank did what? It went bankrupt. Why would it go bankrupt? It's a bank. Well, banks practice what's called fractional banking. They're only keeping a minimum or a maximum of 10% of the money that's been deposited in the bank. So once other people saw that bank failed, well, they got nervous and they went and tried to take their money out of other banks and those banks failed too. And that continued all the way you know, to banks in New York later in the year in 2023. Earlier this year in 2024, banks in the Midwest started failing. Other banks have failed since. And it's a common thing. Banks are always going bankrupt. As soon as people lose their confidence or the bank makes a bad decision like Midland Bank did back in the 80s in Texas, and they're unstable. Well, what's an alternative? Well, in a policy, all five, now six, of the mutually owned dividend-paying whole life companies that are A-plus rated or better, so that means on a scale of 1 to 15, they're all in the top two, right? The top two ratings, stable every single year, have never, never missed a dividend meaning they've been profitable every year. Think about that. Is that impressive? Is that impressive to anyone that's here? Like think about if you're a business, you, how many business owners do I have? Can I get an I for business owner? How many business owners are here today? Imagine if you had a business that was profitable. Terry, thank you. Profitable every year for 119 to 107 years, for 100 plus years, every single one of them. That's impressive. World War I, what's happened during that time? World War II. The Great Depression, the housing crisis of 2008, coming off the gold standard. Name it, they've been profitable in that year, okay? In the bank, it's unprotected. If you're a business owner like Sunshine or McCallie or Terry, right? If you get sued, guess what? If there's a good attorney, they can access the money for liens and judgment. Think of OJ. We know what we know maybe OJ did or didn't do, right? If the glove fits, you must have quit. But OJ was never able to be sued because why? All of his money, he lived in Florida, and all of his money was protected against liens and judgment. Okay, so I want you all, we're not even to the end yet, but look at the comparison, this Coke versus Pepsi taste test. If you're looking at this, so far on the right side, we have guaranteed growth, access to the money, tax-free growth, and a stable environment that's protected against liens and judgment, right? Your living benefits, even though we're talking about life insurance. And now we have the insurance part. In the bank, there's no death benefit. There's no cherry on top. The policy, you get a tax-free death benefit. Just earlier today, last conversation I had, someone putting $30,000 a year in their policy at 54 years old, instant death benefit was about $600,000. Think about that. You can use the money, it's growing tax-free, it's in a stable environment, it's protecting against liens and judgment, it's liquid, and it's giving you a massive multiple of what you've deposited that's guaranteed. That's the second guarantee. So now that you've seen all of this, right? Pretty impressive, like Chris just wrote. Pretty impressive. Where do you think the banks, the left side of my chart, keeps their money? Any guesses? Where are we keeping the money? Where would you guys keep the money? If you're just looking left side, right side, you take off the, you know, the titles, where would you keep your money? I personally, I'm keeping my money on the right side. I'm going to do what the banks have done since 2013, which is quadruple, right? 4X, the amount of whole life insurance that they own. That's pretty crazy, right? Why would they do that? 
Why aren't the banks keeping their money in the banks? Well, banks, when you look up bank owned life insurance, B O L I, banks own 202 billion, with a B, B, billion dollars worth of specially engineered whole life. That's why there's so many executives, so many VPs at the banks. That's a little bit nuts, right? So, what should we do? Just regular old Americans, right? What should we do? Where should we keep our money? The same. So now I'm going to show you something that is going to disrupt you. This piece right here took me forever to understand. Forever. Like 19 times. So again, if you don't understand it the first time, let's just look at this. Now I'm going to be Jason the banker. I know I just said banks are giving you a taxed, you know, growth and all those things. But I'm going to be Jason the banker. And I'm going to have Terry come into my bank. And Terry is buying a new car. Terry comes in and says, hey, Jason, you've been super great as a banker. You've been paying me 4% consistently over time when no other banks are consistent with the return. And I've had the discipline, right, to save money. But now I'm tired of driving this beater. I got to get rid of this thing. It's time to have that new car smell. You guys love the new car smell. I do. Great, especially when you have kids, especially when boys, your car can get pretty stinky pretty fast, right? You hear me? And so now Terry comes in and is like, Hey, Jason, I want to take my 25 grand out. And I'm like, Whoa, Terry, why? And he's like, Ah, oh, I want to get that new car. And I'm like, That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm so glad that you've saved your money here at my bank. And I have a proposition for you. I'm going to give you, instead of you taking your money out, just leave your money with me. I'll keep paying you 4%. I'll even guarantee it for the next 60 months. And all, all I'll do then is I'm going to lend you the money so you can still have the car, but I'm going to loan it to you at 6%. And you're going to walk away after that 60 months making money. Am I telling the truth to Terry? Yes or no? Am I telling the truth? Yes or no? See, Michael says no. I think Michael's smart. That's how I used to think too, Michael, because we're looking at the percentages. Why do you guys say no? Why am I not telling the truth? Why am I being a dishonest banker? Because four minus six is what? Negative two. But let's look at the math. So remember I talked about the math and the mindset of money? So if our monthly payments is 483.32, the future value, $28,999. Now the money growing on the other side at 4%, the future value is 30525 is 30525 more than 28999 well, Unless you guys do math differently than I do in Florida, I was actually telling the truth. And a lot of times we get caught up in the percentages and not looking at what money is actually doing in the situation. You've actually made $1,526. Now, if Terry's buying a Ferrari, just add a zero. Now, Terry's made $15,000 in that inverse scenario. And I'm showing you this for a reason, because now we're going to look about how the banks are making money off of your money. So you're going to come back to my bank and you're going to, Terry's depositing $100,000. She's not really been a good saver, $100,000. And I've already shared that as soon as that money is deposited in the bank, guess what happens? It becomes a liability. Why? Because you've, number one, given up right to that money. It's no longer your money. I know. That's shocking. It's scary. As soon as you deposit the money, it's legally not yours. That's crazy, right? So you've been a depositor into the bank, and now the bank is going to take your money and lend it to someone that wants to buy a home. And they're going to charge them 7%. That money's going to go to the seller, come back into the bank. I'm going to go a little quicker here. Then the bank's going to move the money again. And because it's a shorter term and not as big of a lien, right? First position lien on a car. They're going to lend the money at 8%, turns around, comes back in. It's just a wheel, right? It's just a wheel, guys. Home remodel, 9%, comes back in. And then maybe a little bit more risk in a debt consolidation because right now our U.S. debt over a trillion dollars, the consumer debt, which is the highest it's ever been for credit cards. So they're going to give us a break. Instead of 24%, they're going to consolidate at 12% because, you know, they're so generous, right? And that money's going to come back in. And now let's look at the spreads here. Let's look at the difference. That's what a spread means. Seven minus four is what? Three. Eight minus four is four. Nine minus four is five. And 12 minus four is eight. Okay. Now let's add these up, right? And what do we get? We get 20. 
So Terry's making 4% and now the bank has made 20%. How much more in percentage has the bank made than Terry? And just while you're picturing this, picture what we're teaching you is you to take over that banking function in your life. That's right. Michael knows the answer. I think, Michael, you've seen this before. So the bank just made 500%, as Michael pointed out. They just keep making, and that's annually. On average, don't follow your seat, banks make between 400 and 1300% on every dollar that we deposit in their system. What a great business. What a great business. And it's not even their money. It's the money that you have earned. It's the money that you have traded your most valuable resource for, your time, your energy, and you've deposited in the banks. And the banks say, thank you. And they go have the nicest location in town. They drive the nicest vehicles. They wear the nicest things. I mean, my every thought, like, I wonder why banks give us those lollipops, right, when we leave. And what if you look at the wrapper, what's the lollipop wrapper say? Dum dum. Then they insult us. That's crazy. That's crazy. So imagine yourself in the middle being that bank. That is that is what long-term thinking can get you by following the simple change of one thing that I'm teaching you today. Okay? You ever feel like you don't have control of your real estate business or your money? That's right. The big banks and the institutions, they're in control, right? I know you've felt that before. Private Money Club puts you back in the driver's seat. As members often tell us, it's a total game changer. Join the community of like-minded lenders and borrowers by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. Now let's go through this pretty quickly too because I want to get to all the good stuff for all of you, but let's look at the average American, which is none of you, but the annual pattern of spending. And this has been true, this statistic, we've researched this, has been true for the last 40 plus years. So what most people do, before I dive into this, I'm going to go through what we spend our money on, and then I'm going to show you how people save. Now, what most people are doing, and I saw a practical priest teach me this, a practical Catholic priest, just someone I really connected with. And he said, hey guys, what's the first commandment? Do you guys know the first commandment, right? It's love God with our hearts, our minds, and our soul. What's the second commandment, right? Love thy neighbor like thyself. So numerically, biblically speaking, that's what? One, two, and three. Most Americans for the last 40, almost 50 years have been doing the exact opposite. They've been going one, three, two. Think about it. We get paid, we deposit our money in the bank, and then we gladly give away a large chunk to everyone else, to the automobile, 20 cents of every dollar to housing, 30 cents of every dollar, and to everything else, our lifestyle, our fun, our kids, our electricity, our water, 40%. And then what happens, right? Three, we've given, it's gone one, three, that's what I just showed you, and we're keeping 10 cents of every dollar for ourselves. But statistically speaking, it's much less than that. Like right now, Americans are saving less than 5%. What if we just follow the commandments? What if we said number one, God, number two, is us. We're putting on our oxygen mask first before we take care of other people's families. Logical, right? Logical. And now let's watch what happens when we switch that interest that we're giving away back to us. Five cents of every dollar of every 20 cents is interest. It slides over to here. So that made that 10 cents to 15. In our homes, if you bought a home in the last five to seven years, I beg you, do not go check your statement from the mortgage company. Don't do it. You'll be upset. You'll curse me out. You'll be like, Jason, why'd you tell me? I didn't know I was paying 70 to 80% of every dollar to interest for that first five to seven years. And why do banks do that? Because they know that we move, statistically speaking, every five to seven years. Think about your life. How often have you moved, right? So now 25 cents of every 30 cents goes back to the other side, right? Just add that together. Right now we're at 40 cents of every dollar. This is what it means going into headwind and now picking up a tailwind. Everything else you're getting five more cents. So who here would want a, add it up, a 35 cent of every dollar raise? Anybody, anyone want a 35% raise? 
imagine if you make a hundred grand, that means you're getting 35,000 more a year. Would that help your family? And that's what you can do over time by recapturing and recycling all your money. And so let's talk about how you can get all the money back. This is one of my favorite parts. This blows my mind every time I do it for every truck or car that you ever buy, drive, or own. Okay. We talked about the machine. Let's look under the hood of the machine. Let's pick up the hood and really get into the nitty gritty of it. So remember, we're going to talk about premiums as premium deposits, because when you get paid, when money goes into your bank account, do you feel good or bad about that? Are you excited or sad? Most likely you're excited and you feel good about it, right? Your premiums are now deposits. We're not going to talk about the age. It doesn't matter. Most of the people I talk to are in their 50s or 60s and their early 70s. And we can still help them as long as you're healthy. And your death benefit, it's not important because we're using this to take back control of the banking function in your life. So remember that example earlier where Terry had discipline and saved money. We're gonna put $10,000 of a premium deposit each year. Now, once we build up some capital, right? We've capitalized our system we're gonna take a loan for $25,000. And we're gonna buy a vehicle. Now, because I know all of you are honest and you'd be an honest banker when you start your banking business, you're gonna pay yourself back at $500 a month or $6,000 a year. So let's add this up. We got 70,000 in premium deposits over seven years. You've paid yourself back. You've been an honest banker and put 30,000 in. So those together, you get 100,000. Minus the 25000 for the loan you took against your money. And look at your cash value. Your cash value has still grown to 67881 Remember how I said you would get every dollar back? Well, we're almost there. Right now, you're getting back $0.91 cents of every dollar. Have any of you ever purchased a vehicle? And at the end of the period of driving that vehicle, when you're going to get a, your next vehicle, had 91 cents of every dollar you spent on a vehicle in your wallet and the vehicle? Anybody? Nick and Marissa said, nope, <laughs> right? And when you drive around and you look at everyone else doing this, you think, man, if these people only knew, especially people leasing their vehicles, right? If they only knew a more efficient and optimal way to do things. Now we're going to do something super crazy, like crazy, crazy, and we're not going to put any money back into the policy. We're going to stop making premium deposits after year seven. I don't recommend ever doing this. I wouldn't teach you how to do this. But for the power of this example, we're going to show you what happens. We're going to buy car number two. Terry's buying car number two. Old car or new car smell wore off. Time to buy a new car, right? Five years into it. Year eight, buy a new car. And then we're still going to be an honest banker and pay ourselves back. So now we've made a net injection injection of $30,000 into our system. We've taken another loan out and our money's grown to $91,000. We've only put 5,000 total into the system, right? Net total, but our cash value has grown by $23,592. And car number two, we're already making cars. And the average American is going to buy between 11 and 13 cars during a lifetime. So just showed you how you can make money for every car you can buy, drive, and own. And that's pretty crazy. You get all the interest back in your family. You have the vehicle and the money you paid for it by just taking over the banking function in your life. And so we got three rules here. The three rules are pay yourself first as if your life depends on it, because it actually does. Pay yourself with interest. That means being an honest banker and recycle and recapture your money, which I just showed you how to do. So if this works for a car, what else do you guys and gals think this could work for? Maybe anything? Let's talk about one of our clients. One of our clients came to us. Remember in the beginning, I said, hey, right now debt is like a noose around America's neck. It is an anchor that is weighing us down. The majority of folks I talk to have debt, even if they're making really good money. So this is a chiropractor from Minnesota that came to Brent Kessler a few years ago who founded the Money Multiplier, by the way, if you didn't know who Brent was. And this is his actual debt sheet. This is what it looked like. Total debts, $478,774. $5,777 per month 
leaving his family forever. He's 45 years old, nine third party debts. And we asked him, we said, hey, doc, here you show us your debts. And this is the same as our conversation will be with each and every one of you who want to start this process. You got to weigh in first, right? Like if you want to wrestle, you got to weigh in. We got to know what we're working with. So we're like, okay, well, doc, how much are you saving? Well, I'm putting, you know, $25,000 a year into a self-employment plan, right? To, to a savings plan. And we're like, all right, would you be willing to just change that one thing? Change where that money goes first. And he's like, well, will it get me out of debt faster? Yes. Are you willing to do that? And his answer was, of course, Jason, that makes sense. So let's look at this year one, right? It's going to take him 19 years to pay it off the traditional way, the way he was already paying it. Let's see how much faster using the infinite banking concept, the stock is going to recapture and recycle this money back to his family. Year one, he deposits 25,000. Remember, it's a marathon. He doesn't have full access. He can take out almost 15 grand, 14,000 and change. So what's he going to do? He's going to pay off the first two debts, the Discover and the Lowe's car. Immediately, he recaptures $448 per month. Remember how I talked about picking up a tailwind and recapturing the money and bringing it back to your family. So now Doc is paying his family $448 a month because why? He was already doing that. And he's just going to keep doing that for the period of time. And so in year two, he deposits another $25,000. He has $16,571 available. Payments back to himself, $5,374. $21,000 that is in his system, in his segregated account and taken out as a loan. He's going to now pay off Nordstrom, Wells Fargo, and a private loan. Most likely the private loan was either something for his business or maybe like a debt consolidation, right? I've done a few of those myself. Like I said, I've made all the financial mistakes, same as the doc did here. Now look, $1,900 a month recaptured times that times 12. That's almost $24,000 a year. And we're only going to year three, folks. And year three makes another $25,000 deposit. And we've hit what I like to call the efficiency point. My buddy, Mr. Heloc, Joe, calls this the cash, uh, the cash tree or the money tree. The money tree is what he actually calls it. But look, we're depositing $25,000. We have $541 more we can use. Payments back to himself, twenty-three grand and change. Total cash, he now pays off the boat, the BMW, and a little towards the condo. That's pretty phenomenal, right? We're only in year three. Now he's up to $3,600 a month and change. Almost, right? Almost $48,000 a year back to himself. Remember, it's a marathon. So far, how much do we put in? Year one, Doc put in 25 grand. Two, 25 grand. Year three, 25 grand. Remember, these numbers are just an example. You can put in less than this. You can put in more than this. Just depends on where you're at financially. You got to meet yourself where you're at, okay? He's put in 75 grand. We've taken loans out each year immediately. As soon as this, within the first 30 days, he's taken out 55,000. How much is left in the policy? You guys might be thinking 20,000, right? That's the math, 75 minus 55, 20. But you'd be wrong. It's actually $75,000 still earning that uninterrupted compounding interest at a guaranteed 3.25%. Or depending on the company, it might be slightly different, but you get my point, right? All of that money has always been earning guaranteed compounding interest. And then all the questions you guys have, they're awesome questions. I just saw the one from you, Michael. Hold it to the end and I'll, I'll spend a few minutes getting to them. So now we're in year four makes a deposit, and guess what? His availability goes up again, pays himself back, pays down the condo, not fully paid off. Year five, another deposit. Look, the cash value goes up again. He's recaptured 44,000 back to himself. 71 grand, pays off the condo, part of the home. Now we're only in year six, folks. In year six, he can't stuff anything more. We talk about this as a warehouse of your wealth. He can't like this is a 12 ounce container. Can you put 16 ounces of water into this container? The answer is no, you can't. But some people tell me you can't. I can't work with those folks. And that's okay. Still love them. Just can't work with them. But at some point, you can't stuff anything more back into your system. At that point, what do we have to do? We have to expand our business. We have to open 
a bank on Third Street. So now he's doing his $10,000 deposit because that's all he can put into the first policy, right? His first banking policy. He has 13000 in cash value. He still has another 25000 that he's kind of recaptured, recycled. So he's going to put that into a new policy that gives him that 14000 right away. Payments back of 54000 82000 in cash. And boom, another $1,221 recaptured. Six years, not 19, didn't use all of our hands and toes to get there. Six years, changing one thing, where his surplus money went, being patient, being persistent, and practicing the banking that we're teaching him. And we do this and meet you guys. We used to do this once you had a policy in force, once you're approved to be an owner in a mutually owned company. You don't have to wait that long anymore. All you have to do is have the call with someone like myself, your money mentor, which I'll put my, you know, here we go. I'll throw it here in the chat. Anyone who wants to have a call with me. Oh, no. So I'm going to pop this in the chat now. I still have more to show you, so don't go anywhere yet. But just in case you guys are already thinking, man, I got to talk to Jason. I got to get my debts under control and put my savings. You have to have savings to be able to make this work. Lazy money. But I want to start and map out how I'm going to pay back my debt and how long it'll take. We put a team in place called the concierge team, and we have a debt blaster. So you financially weigh in. You give us your debts. You give us the interest rate, the total owed, how much you're paying a month if you're overpaying. And then we will map that out from either a snowball or an avalanche, top to bottom, highest interest first, lowest interest first. Tell you mathematically how long it's going to take you and then show you how long it'll take to pay yourself back. And you'll get to bring all of that money back into your family and create a guaranteed legacy. It's always an and with the scenarios we're talking about when you think abundantly. And same thing happens once, once you're approved, once your policy is enforced, once you have funded it, do you guys believe that knowledge is power? I'm gonna offer you an optimization. Knowledge is only a powerful when applied. And this is why I partnered with the Money Multiplier. And this is why today I've helped over 3,000 families get started doing exactly what I'm teaching you here today. And it's simple. It's simple, it's legal, and it's easy. And it starts by changing just one thing. Once your policy is enforced, we assign an implementation specialist, free of charge, by the way. Sounds crazy. People always say, Jason, why do you guys give up 60 to 70% of your commissions? Why do you give us someone that's going to be our student driver telling us how to take out loans, how to pay back loans, how to do the things? It's because we are not successful unless you are successful. When you're successful, we're successful. And 91% of the people I help, we help, will come back and do additional policies within the first year. That's when we start making money in the volume of it. And so this is one of my Favorite questions. I used to tell us the team I led when I was talking about the building that recruitment team every Friday. How do you eat an elephant, right? When you have a big, hairy, audacious goal and you just want to get there fast, you can't. You have to do it one bite at a time, right? You have to have some elephant stew, some elephant steak, some elephant burgers, so elephant salad, get that thing on ice so you can eat it longer. It doesn't go bad. And like Herbert said, one bite at a time. And the man or the woman at the top of the mountain didn't just fall there, right? No, they had to take the steps and be patient. And so when you guys make progress with anything financially, celebrate. Wire that winning feeling into your nervous system. Give yourself a high five, a pat on the back, a hug. Your nervous system doesn't know any different. Give a yes. Feel that energy. At the end of the day, we are all energy Money in motion is energy, nothing more. Don't make it more than that. And so is it possible for no to owe no man or no woman nothing? And the answer is yes, I've shown you. I've shown you the machine works for debts, expenses, vacations, homes, taxes, tuition, everything. We're only limited by that valuable real estate, which is our imagination. So it even gets better. I told you we're going to map out the millionaire mystery. I'm wrapping this up, winding it down. If we continue to pay back the homes as we promised, look what's going to happen. We paid back the 879 for 251 months. 
which is another 220,000. Same with the home, 273, that's 493,000, it's a half million, but it gets better. Remember, we're earning a guaranteed interest rate in the policy and probably earning dividends. So probably earning more than this 4%, probably more than five to 6%. But just at 4%, that's $749,000. Make it 5%, that's probably closer to 800 and some thousand dollars. Plus you have a house and a condo that are paid off. Plus that money is tax free and guaranteed to be paid out to the things and people you love. So now that you know this, everyone should do it. If you don't, you're statistically stealing from your kids, your grandkids and their future kids. And once you understand this, once you understand what the wealthiest families in the world have already done, the Morgans, the Stanleys, the Barclays, the Rothschilds, They've all understood this to keep money in their families. So you gotta break the bonds of financial slavery that you don't even know you're in. You're letting all that money leave your family. And only one of two things is gonna happen, right? Or let's go here first. If like our buddy Warren, who's sitting heavy in cash right now, poor people would just do what rich people would do. They won't be poor anymore. So only one of two things is gonna happen. We're either gonna live, or I've got bad news for you. We're gonna graduate, we're gonna die. Are we better with or without this simple strategy that we're teaching, a simple infinite banking process, right? Are we better with or without? We're better with. So if you wanna take control of your financial situation, if you wanna have a conversation with me, you can actually scan that or you can go to the link I put above, I'll paste it one more time and directly schedule a call with me. You scan this link, it'll actually bring you back to this presentation where you can watch it again, you can digest this further, and just keep challenging yourself that if you don't know it, you just don't know it yet. I'm going to look at some of the questions. I have a few minutes, so pop the questions in the chat. Let's see. Oh, Robert, man, I love that. Thank you. Keep an open mind, take notes, be interactive, read the, read the book, definitely read the book. Explore a possibility of using dividend paying whole life and consider changing the way you think about money and traditional financing. Thank you, Robert, that's awesome. So Michael said, and Nicholas already answered him, Thank, man, you guys are awesome. Can I start with $500 put in and then pay $100 a month for a couple of years, that's $1,200 a year, or put 200 a month and just let it, you can, do you agree the wealthy have more choices, Michael? It's a great question. If you agree, if you answered yes, you can either pay your premium deposit annually or you can pay it monthly just depending on how you want to capitalize, I mean, put money into your system. Now, we usually say the minimum is gonna be 10 times your age. I always say it depends on what you're trying to do, right? If you've got so much debt, but you just wanna learn how to do this, then it's gonna be 10 times your age. So you get started in the process. You build the muscle, like anything. It's like going to the gym. It's like having a new diet. It is all of those things. So any other questions? Frank, you are, you are welcome. Well, <clears throat> thanks to each and every one of you for being here today, for being open to learning new things. You guys have been awesome, awesome questions, awesome interaction. I, I love the interactiveness of this group and just give yourselves a high five. You're sitting next to someone, high five them right now. Tell them you rock, you're awesome. And I say that because you're in the 5%. You are the ones who just gave up your most valuable resource, your money, your energy, your time, and your attention. So be blessed and look forward to chatting with you. That's right, we, we rock. And Michael, if you don't have 10 times your age yet, Go be creative. Look at maybe where you have financial leakage coming out of the bucket or how can you be more resourceful? Like I told my 73-year-old dad, he makes these awesome chairs. My last story, I'm wrapping this up, landing the plane. I was on a trip with my father on vacation and he was telling me how much everything was costing and telling me he was on a fixed budget because he's retired, right? From a county employee, retired, earns so much or gets paid so much per month, has fixed bills, bills are going up. Electricity is getting more expensive. Water is more expensive. Eggs are way more expensive. And he's like, Jay, this is this is hard. Like, I don't know how I can enjoy my life. Like, I, I feel like, and I said, Dad, you make these awesome Adirondack chairs out of skis. 
The skis are at no cost to you. You made friends with a guy down at the local, you know, where they dump off the skis. And he would go and just get hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of skis and make really cool individual unique chairs. I said in Florida, you can sell those for, you know, $500 to $1,000 a piece. Let's call it $500. How long does it take you to make a chair? Oh, three or four hours. Okay. So if you made four chairs a month, that's $2,000 more, right? That's $24,000 a year more. Are you following me? And he got a little flustered, but he got my point. Sometimes we're just limited by our resourcefulness. We have more resources. We have more gifts. What is your gift, Michael? What would that be? And maybe like Frank said, maybe it's a HELOC if your debt to income ratio is good and you can do something like that. So again, if you want to see the presentation again, scan the QR code, go watch a presentation. If you want to book a call with me, jump on my calendar. I look forward to connecting with you, being of service to you on your journey and be blessed. I believe I'm back here next week. So if you want to come back next week, come see me again next week and we'll talk about similar things and I'll probably tell different stories. So God bless. See you next time. Thank you. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them, but I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you wanna know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button, actually smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.